What is up all you sexy nerds? Grizzly McBee here. And you are watching and listening Nerds New Sexy Entertainment. On multiple platforms. So, thank you again for tuning in. Today, I am joined by several individuals. You may, if you're watching, you only see one. Um, the other's having some technical difficulties with some of his equipment. But he is still here. <laughs> and for those of you that are just listening, hearing those giggles, Wild is doing some crazy crap with his hands. <laughs> and yes, Wildfire One is with me today. I, I am always with you. I will always be with you, spirit and body. I am Wildfire One. Rare. And, the, and go ahead. joining us today is the one and only Ice Cold 960. Oh, not just 960, awesome. it's 960. Oh, change, changing it up. He's, oh. He's he's leveled up. He's got he's gotten like <laughs> Which by the way, leveling so up. Keep 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 track of of those videos that are coming out with our update videos. Well, we got one left. Uh, we've got oh, two left. one left. One one update. Uh, uh, one one update left, and then the the finale video. Yes. Uh, which will to which to will see who leveled up the most. Who's who's as the winner were in in this who's case? Who's the biggest loser? And yada 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 yada. And then who's probably going to suffer the fate of who who lost the, the least amount? And that's the poor person who's probably gonna feel like poor uh, Grizzly over here who had to dress up as Wonder Woman. All I know is it's not going to be me. <laughs> well, that's good because I know it won't be me. <laughs> it's going to be wild this time. Uh, seeing as how I was at his house <laughs> drinking with him this last weekend, um, I know I'm not winning. <laughs> 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 I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm happy we started this because it really kind of kicked me in the ass to start doing other things in my life that need to be done. And, and I think that, uh, yeah, thank you guys for suckering me into being a, to this level up challenge. And it's really, it's well, been amazing. Well, you, you can thank me for that one because I was the one that volunteered you and I. Yeah, I know this. you did, bitch boy. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking did that shit. I get a call from you like, oh, they want to do, they want to do a weight loss challenge. I'm like, God damn it. I'm, as I'm going to get a big ass hamburger. Like, I'm talking like that huge. <laughs> yeah, literally, he was on his way with with one of his coworkers to go get a big old hamburger. Oh man, and I was introducing <coughs> him to like one of the places around here that we, it was that, all his idea. Well, it's all good. Like, like I said, man, you guys are fucking amazing for making me do this, and and it, it changed my life. Like, I I have so much more stamina now. Uh, I seem to be. I just feel happier. You know, it, it little you're, things you're like looking that. a lot better too. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, like yeah, yeah. when when I did that video with P Rock and uh, and hashtag when we did the the the, uh, the booze brothers. The booze brothers. I walked in and the first thing I heard was like, "Oh my god, you lost so much weight!" And I'm like, "Have I?" <laughs> well, oh. you've you've got some muscle tone now too. Yeah. Slowly but surely, and I'm working on muscles. Wild muscles. I can't really imagine that. Well, okay. When when I first met Wild, it, he wasn't that far off from, you know, being my my size, and You're that was what two, 2009. Yeah. yeah. When Not when we time. first met. Yeah. And I mean, you were you were a pretty hefty dude. I mean, I'm I'm a big guy, but but I've even lost you were pretty since hefty then. yourself. You know, like yeah. that was different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I started out, I want to say, the job I have now, I started out, all together, I was about 300 pounds. I was about maybe three three pounds shy of 300. And um, then I started working and, and doing stuff, and then I, I kind of caught off to where I was when I started this. And I just kind of leveled out there. So after this, I'm starting to lose weight and more, and, will, and we'll get to that come beginning of October. But In a future video. Yeah, in yeah. a future video. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, this is episode 135. It's a mini boss episode, right? 135. And I, I, it seems just like yesterday we were starting this season. 
Oh, it does. But and you know, it's funny is because this season we did things a lot differently. We did things very a much a lot ahead, differently, very much ahead of ourselves, yeah. and uh, a lot of scheduling. Like, uh, I kind of felt bad because you know certain people like StewTube that I did videos with. Like I, w I usually I'm like okay it'll be out next week but now I like you had to wait a month or two <laughs> I'm sorry dude yeah <laughs> you know uh, but that's just how that's just how the cookie crumbles when you do things the way we're doing it now and it's so much yeah. easier it's so much better um, I, honestly guys like it, I, it's better than the stress of just having but anyway that's 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 neither here nor there let's let's talk about our subject what are we talking about what's our topic. Today, we are talking about the Umbrella Academy on Netflix. It's a mini boss episode, so we have to talk about something. Like I said just a minute ago, we got to talk some big. epic, and you get pretty. It, Umbrella Academy is pretty fucking epic. Like I, I, I heard oh, about yeah. it a while back, right? And then I wasn't really interested in. It. I was like, oh, it's another superhero movie. It's gonna be fucking or TV show. It's gonna be fucking stupid. And because I'm about sick and tired of them, I hate to say it because I love superhero stuff. I do. I'm a big fan, but like I, it's. But everything is superhero these days. That's that's what's everything. trending, and now it's dumb as fuck. I really want to watch the boys. Not to change the subject, but the boys from Amazon, on Amazon Prime. I really want to watch well, that. If you think about it, out of all the things that's happened so far in 2020, we need more superheroes. We need superheroes, not just more. No, we need superheroes in general. I want a Superman IRL. to come. N in no real more life. movies. IRL. Yeah. Yeah. It, we do. You're right. Ice cold. We totally do. Um, well, if you want IRL superheroes, then you be my guest and jump in some radioactive waste. I tried I'm that. Down. I, don't give I, I tried that. I I lost a lot of weight. So that's how you're <laughs> eating. Yeah. I'm eating it. <laughs> um, that, that's called meth. That's called meth. <laughs> oh wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> how do you take meth? I don't know. I've never done it. Oh, you smoke it. That's right. You smoke it or inject it. You smoke oh, it and you see? can inject it. Don't do drugs. <laughs> There's a sexy entertainment says don't keep, do keep drugs. Keep in mind with the D.A.R.E. program. Yes. Needles are bad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, the Umbrella Academy is basically a bunch... Of, like, the way you explain it to me, it, it, and it's kind of why I'm, like, I wasn't very interested, is a bunch of kids born on the same fucking day who have superpowers. And I was like, uh maybe it might be good. They're I'll all it. adopted by the same guy. Yeah. It, you know what it reminds me of, especially with the older guy that adopted them, it reminds me of like League of Extraordinary, Extraordinary now, before, Gentlemen. Before we get into yeah. all the nitty gritty, yeah. uh, do you guys want to say who cre originally created the Umbrella Academy? You don't know, do you? I guess not. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Gerard to Way. Oh, the show? No, no, no. The guy, Gerard Way, created the original... Because the show is based off of the comic books. Oh, it's really based off a. Of, there's a comic. Oh, yes, I see. Gerard this Gerard Way himself, the um, co-founder of My Chemical Romance, okay. made the comic books. Oh, I heard he was doing comics. I just didn't know that was his comic. That's yeah. Good information. So much for uh, research being done on our end, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's we we keep Ice Cold around for a few reasons, and that's one of them. He's very intelligent. He knows stuff that I don't. So, you know, I, I, don't, I like I've said in other episodes, I can't know everything about everything. It's good that we have multiple people that know stuff about other stuff. You know, I wouldn't have mm -hmm. known. Yeah. I wouldn't have known that. So it's really fucking golf clap for bringing that up, Ice Cold. Like, hell yeah. Way. Yeah, it's hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, people have multiple talents. They do. Like, just because a person can sing doesn't mean they can't draw, or they don't have a good imagination. Yeah. Well, so yeah, it makes but sense. It's, it's still hard to it's hard to hear. You know, people going from one to another. Yeah, one extreme to another, as far as like yeah, talent. yeah, yeah. I mean, he had to have something to fall back on if his fucking music career didn't work, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, surprise, surprise! It uh, flourished. <laughs> well, the the TV, the, the fucking Netflix series is amazing. No, I'm talking about Mike and Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that too. <laughs> but the Netflix series is amazing. Like, oh yeah, yeah. It's you, you guys. You know, you guys. You guys. They came to me. It, well, actually, we were talking about what what to do a podcast on, and they said these two said. Uh, Let's Umbrella do it on Academy. Umbrella Academy, and I'm like, "Fuck, okay, well, I gotta watch it." Now, but that by that time, I was balls deep in in watching um, One Piece, 
So I had to finish that before oh, I started. I couldn't watch that. <laughs> well, you know, potato, potato. People like certain things. I, I, I thought it was okay. I started watching this afterwards, and I just I binged it in like three days. And it was just he, 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 he pulled he pulled a grizzly. Oh yeah, on that one. I and couldn't just stop. straight binge watched it. <laughs> Amateur. <laughs> I did like I did a three. Well, you know, I had to do other stuff too. But I was I would uh, I would stop go in there watch it watch about five six episodes and then like on my weekend just got it done. I was supposed to be uh, while he was out of for his uh, birthday, so mm-hmm. I had that much time to do it so we can do it you know this week. And, uh, and I was gone for a week. So. Yeah, so it was perfect. Of course, I waited the last three days to do it because that was about the time I finished. What, <laughs> let's let's start with you, Ice Cold. What did you think of the series uh, of Umbrella Academy when you first started watching it? Like, maybe start from the first season. You don't have to go so episode when by episode. I first started watching, I thought, like, the first scenes you literally see is just all these random women giving birth. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, I mean, that doesn't really seem unnatural thousands of babies get born on the same day at the well, same time well the first one the first scene was very unnatural cuz that bitch just yeah, kissed a dude yeah the first one was unnatural cuz she went and from wasn't nothing pregnant. to yeah but but just hearing about 47 or 43 of them however many go from just be born it's like well, it, did, it only showed us the one aspect but they it only they, showed us the one which was i believe in russia yeah, and it's funny because mm-hmm. she just kissed a she's just kissed a boy. She just kissed a boy. All of a sudden, she's like, "Hi, I'm pregnant." And of course, and of course, <laughs> my first thought, of yeah. course, my first thought was, you know, that old thing, that old wives tale that you know people used to tell their kids: if you kiss a boy, you're going to get pregnant. And then yeah. I about fell out my chair laughing. I'm sure that's what they were going for, and that's a really good start. I think it was a really good start for what they were what they were trying to to pull off. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, After all, the women. Uh, you know, give birth. Uh, what set six, seven of them were adopted and shit. Yeah, by one guy, one rich guy. Um, I want to know more it. about him. How much do you, you want know, for it? I think is what he said. Asshole. What? He goes, "How much do you want for it?" When he bought the the kid. How much yeah. do you want for it? Yeah, and he's like a really hoardy torty kind of fucking like English guy, he like was something all business. Yeah. He reminds me a lot of like per what Professor X would be if he was like a sno- snotty little fuck. If, if, if he wasn't in a wheelchair, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, Professor X was a snotty little fuck, but that's the point. But you get my point. Like he he's, he seems very almost almost very cliche. Um, he's so sure about himself. Yeah, but he but the character himself was like very cliche, kind of like superhero aristocrat. father, aristocrat, yeah. a, a, a yes. aristocrat type. Yeah, well put. Yes. Um, and it, you know, you, you throughout the series, you get to see the kids grow up, and I'm we'll, we'll get to that eventually. But like, or what they look like when they were younger, and I think they chose the perfect kids to represent the older mm-hmm. adults because they, yeah. I, they look just like them. I'd yep. swear that they brought like in the brothers and sisters of these fucking adult actors, except for number three. Yeah, he never changed. Yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah. True. Yeah, I well, mean, even Ben, like who had died but, when yeah. he was younger. Yeah, like his adult self and his younger self, I couldn't tell the difference. Hey, you know who else you couldn't tell the difference uh, between? Who number five? five of course. <laughs> and they, the way they did that was pretty cool. Like, there's a lot of time travel. I, I think they went a little too far with the time travel to an extent. I don't think so. But eh, well, I think just, it was pretty good. It's just something you see in everything now. That's where yeah, I but I like I like what they did with it in season two. Yeah, I well I like what they did with with like the bureau. Oh yeah, yeah. that was the yeah. almost the main bad guy. You know what I mean? Like the bureau was, and then and then you got like, and then you got what 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 are those two two uh, like hunters names that were after him in season Hazel one? Hazel and, and, and okay. Hazel and Cha-Cha. sweet dudes. I'm telling okay. Hazel and Cha Cha. Okay. Yes. Okay. I liked I liked their dynamic. I liked how those two kind of worked together. They were kind of funny together. I could tell it was cool to see Hazel really trying to get out of the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And Cha Cha was like in love. Like she would never admit it, but she was in love with him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, she was all he was all she knew, and that was like her infatuation. So when he's when he fell in love with that old lady, which by the way, like that was cute. Mm-hmm. 
and he saw and she saw like him doing that especially after a situation where she thought he showed interest in her like that kind of broke my heart i'm not gonna lie i was like oh yeah yeah oh like guys like i'm just gonna say watch the show we've heard you've heard us say this a thousand times about different shows but watch the show uh it's it's so good uh grizzly let's go to you we heard we heard uh, ice cold kind of like first thoughts about it what are your first thoughts you know the the first few episodes because it was so slow in a way it was hard to catch on to the storyline okay. um but i want to say it was probably towards the end of episode two beginning of episode three that they kind of started tying the rest of the storyline into itself to where it made a lot more sense and it was a lot easier to to follow and get more in in depth into the different characters so did you mm-hmm. were, was it hard to catch your interest is that what you're saying it especially for the first episode like it had its moments but as a whole it was a very slow going episode in, in my I opinion agree. i can agree with that the first episode I, w- I was i watched while i was cooking usually what i do is when i first start a show i'll i'll cook and i'll watch it and if it does something that catches my attention i'll i'll binge watch it like i just won't stop and i so i give this i usually i do the rule of three i give it three episodes and if it doesn't catch my attention well i mean for this i would have watched it anyway but if it yeah. d- generally doesn't catch my attention i'm i'm not interested you know or it might not and i just might not come back to it or i might come back to it later on you never know but uh, yeah this one yeah by i want to say by episode two um or the end of episode one i had my attention like i like the idea of the girl the these people like just coming just having babies out of nowhere i like the idea of uh you know these people having superpowers and kind of coming into their own and you're getting a little bit of uh a little bit of backstory <sighs> What did you guys think of uh, number seven? Vanya? Um, it was interesting at first. Did you see um, it coming, as well, I'll ask? No. I did. I hate to, I hate to be the odd man out, but I did. Like, I, I, I saw her having powers coming, but I didn't see her... Being, being the one that caused... I, oh, that I didn't see, but I, I saw a Cinderella story coming for sure. Yeah, yeah. I saw. I, I mean, I, yeah. Y- you know that she has to have some sort of powers. I mean, the fact that she was locked in a fucking padded room. Oh, the way like she was treated in, in general. She was it, segregated yeah. from everyone else. She, she was treated like Cinderella, like she was the redhead stepchild. It's it's weird because you can see the different angles of how the different siblings, as they were called. Um, treated each other i mean you can tell early on that there was going to be a love interest between you know the two but yeah you can tell early on that you know luther would luther would destroy the world for allison oh yeah he would kill his own dad for allison Mm -hmm. which he wanted to Uh, at one point yeah well do you blame him he spent how long on the fucking moon Eight years on yeah. the moon, just because the father wanted to send him to the moon to protect him. It's Whoa! Like, okay, I believe uh, I believe what Luther believes. I believe he didn't want to see the creation he made, the mistake. Exactly, exactly. You know, the half man, half gorilla. Fuck! And he didn't need those gorilla powers. I bet you that. Like, I want to say, I would love to say that that like enhanced his ability. Oh, I'm sure it did. I mean, he was a badass. What'd you guys think of Pogo? Pogo was cool. I liked how they (laughs) incorporated him in season two. Yes, the the CG. Like I was scared was gonna go bad. Like I was scared that. But it was so good. No, it was very good. It was so good. What about you, Ice Cold? What did you think of Pogo? I I think it was cool having him be like the assistant to the father. Yeah, he 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 he, w- he was the assistant to the father, but in the same way, he was the father figure. Well, yeah, to he, those he, kids. Was, he was the father figure because Reginald, the father, was literally absent besides training and dinner. Yeah, he really wasn't that a was father. 
In fact, he, he no. gave them a surrogate mother and father. Yeah, but the surrogate mother in and of itself was... An Fucking animal. robot. Fucking robot. I knew that was the case after I saw her. Just how she was reacting to things. I was like, yes, yeah, she's and a And girl. how she was walking. The first time I saw her walking, I was like, bet you she's got circuits. Well, especially when they went back, they did they did these flashbacks, and she didn't look any different. Yeah. And then you get yeah. a little story about her, or rather her counterpart, or why she looks like in season two, which is really cool. You actually get to see the, the mother. Original. More or less. Yeah. So let's, let's let's talk about how the first season starts and ends. We already talked the beginning. Let's talk about the end of it. Uh, do you guys remember how it ended? They Vanya. tell they go, jump to the time to try to avoid the apocalypse. Yeah, because Vanya went apeshit because of that one dude who got. Which, to be honest, it was all Luther's fault. Yeah. Because she wouldn't have been like that if he really didn't lock her up. She was really sorry with what happened to Alice. Yeah, he shouldn't a lot. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. she just she was had no control over her powers and she had this madman tricking her into thinking he loved her to to yeah. more or less take over, you know, basically do stuff that he couldn't do as a kid anyway. You know, what do you guys think of that? What was that character's name? The the crazy uh, that was um, despicable, but his backstory was interesting. Leonard Peabody there we or go. Harold Jenkins. I can't remember which I think one it was, was I think Jenkins what Peabody was his fake name, I think. Cuz I remember it was I remember hearing it and I'm going that's kind of stupid. <laughs> and I but could be wrong. But to be honest, uh he you know, it shows him grown up to actually enjoy um the Umbrella Academy. Yeah. And he well, wanted he... to join him so much. And he was really into the Umbrella Academy so much he wanted to Join him, bro. Look, I mean, it shows that in a flashback. Oh, yeah. That but was a what, good flashback. What changed him was his abusive father. Yes. His, his, um, more or less, if I remember correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, his mom passed during his birth. Uh-huh. And uh, his dad, it was sad because his dad, in that in that flashback, looked so happy. Mm-hmm. Until they until saw there was complications, yes. And then we saw that, like, he was a drunk, and he came home and beat on his son, and and it he was blamed his son for her death, yeah. and he ended up killing his own dad and getting arrested. Which, like, I didn't want to like that totally scene. Fucking had it coming. I didn't want to like that scene at all, but I was like, yeah, you had that coming, fucker. Like, you had that. Um, you know, you I mean, be, that's that's what you call uh, character development. And that, well, that you know, it is very much character development, and it goes back to like you know, you know, the Joker. You can how you can, all it takes is one bad day, and that kid had one really, one bad, really day. bad day. He's already broken. He's coming home, and his dad's beating on him. So instead of getting him a beer, he gets him a, a sledge or a hammer, mm-hmm. right to the back of the skull. Yeah, that that scene was he deserved it. That, oh, that, definitely did. And I don't think anyone should die, but child abuse is a thing, and you're a despicable human being if you do that. You're not even human. Yeah, that's it's too bad. But uh, like honestly, well written. Yeah, well written. Made you understand uh, why why um, the character was the way he was, and kind of not necessarily respect him. But go, damn. <laughs> damn, he went through some shit. I can yeah. see why he's fucked up. Yeah. You know? So after that, he had this really, like, hatred towards Although, the Umbrella Although, you can't come to think about it, though. He, so he found the book that was thrown away by Klaus. Which I love Klaus. I, I didn't I, care I, for him I at guess first. the predicament that Vanya was in was a combination of Klaus and um, Luther. Yeah, Klaus threw threw the books and stuff out of like this really beautiful looking box because he wanted to sell the box for drugs. I liked Klaus. I think Klaus's character grew on me. Klaus at first was I didn't like him. Like I thought, oh Jesus Christ! But they, but you know, there's a lot of shows that have this thing where they bring in a, a druggie, and uh, there's like almost a, a there's almost like a turning point where they're trying to better themselves. I think he knew what she could do and was wanting to e- e- exploit her for what she well, could do. 
Well, the only reason why, and we need to run over this, the only reason why he knew what she could do is because Klaus threw away the book that had all of Reginald's writings in it. Oh, with all, like the diary, more or less, or I call it a diary, but it's probably more like a, a, a journal. Mm -hmm. that, that he kept memoir, it, yeah, memoir, as it were. That he kept that uh, gave information on everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, you know, like, a Klaus, and I was saying, Klaus is probably one of my favorite characters who kind of had uh, his story completely change. Like, he started off as this unlikable drug char druggy character who just was kind of worthless, in my opinion. Like, he just he just wanted to steal and get money and get his next high, you know? I did like the uh, hello, goodbye on his hands. I thought that was kind of funny. But Klaus, I think, had his parts, his moments in the show because that, if you think about it, without him, certain you just made this point too, Ice Cold. Certain plot aspects wouldn't come to play. I think with, without Klaus, season two would not have been as good as it was. Oh, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree, and we'll get to that here in a second because a lot of shit happened to Klaus in season two. Oh yeah, um, a lot of shit happened. A lot of them in season two, but Klaus. Uh, the end of season one, Vanya's going ape shit. She's literally the bad guy all of a sudden out of, out of all this. She just she can't stands no more, and they subdue her. After I mean, you find out she's got the ultimate power out of all of them. She is she is the doomsday weapon, more or less. And uh, so they they subdue her, knock her ass out to to not even save the world, but to avoid maybe dying at the end at the apocalypse because she shot a laser out her fucking chest and it hit the moon and the moon cracked up and started to like a part of it was coming to the coming to the world we're fucked at the end of season uh, season one they went they went in the past back when shit was bad for uh, if you were of a certain ethnicity unfortunately and, and mm -hmm. it was 60s night are you sh are you sure yes it was the 60s yes. because it was. Oh, um, you're right. 1961, a few 1962, years before Kennedy yeah. was assassinated. That's right. You are correct. My mistake. You find you come to find out that each one of them landed in a different year, because five can't control his powers very well when it comes to time. Well, travel. it's not just that. It's time travel in of itself, no matter if you control or not, is always chaotic. It's always unpredictable. And that was be beautiful how they did explain that. There's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of different shows that try and explain it, and this one explained it to the point where, like, even some a dumb person can understand. But they all, even though they all came back different years, they all came back to the same exact spot. What you guys think of the guy taking pictures and shit? The the conspiracy uh, theorists. Honestly, I I thought he worked for the bureau, like he was tracking them through time. At first, I did too. Yeah. And then he was just a fucking a nut. He's just a conspiracy <laughs> theorist with a with a cons with a huge conspiracy plan. Which honestly, it worked out for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and it was on point. And I gotta say, like the first episode of season two, where uh, five comes out, and all of a sudden, like all of a sudden, it's, uh, it's it looks normal. Shins. All of a sudden, you get Russians evading America, and like. Uh, out of nowhere, you get all of the fucking, like, all one through seven, or, you know, the ones that are alive, come out, and they're, they just, like, have longer hair. They just look like fucking superheroes. It looks like they're in costumes. Almost superheroes, in a sense. Yeah. I, I love seeing but, um, Ben just jump so up on top of that this. building. Oh, yeah. I will say this. We find out that uh, what happened in season, uh, episode one and season two is technically Diego's fault. Mm. Because because he was so he was so hell bent JFK. on he was so hell bent on saving JFK. Yes. Yeah. The apocalypse of the sixties was. Yeah, but he does that's have how he was complex. raised. He was raised and told that he was supposed to be a hero. 
And he does have a. I I did like that about that where he was in the he was in a nut house and they were basically like, dude, you. you oh my have god! A when fucking when five said, my brother is not well. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker turns on everyone when it when it helps him. But honestly, like you get to well, actually get it, to see. To be honest, that kind of helped Diego too. Well, it did, but you get you get to see that five has a heart. You know, in some instances, uh, my favorite part of season two, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, is when he meets his future self. When when he's like, you know, when when two of the same entities meet in the same timeline, they start getting like flatulence and they start having to they sweat. And they oh, get, you mean when when five meets himself? Five yeah. five meets his future self and they just start like eyeballing, eye fucking each other. Because imagine what it'd be like to meet. Like if if you from twenty like you know you should days ago meet yourself but you want to yeah but imagine like what it would be like you're trying to out know yourself you know what I mean that that's you're it's like a rock in a hard place you can't win yeah well I mean in a sense number five you know the I guess I should say the current timeline of number five know more about his past past self though I just like how Luther was fucking clueless up until the end. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just like what the fuck? Who do okay, I'll listen to you. Oh, oh no, you're making more sense now. Like the poor guy didn't know what the fuck to do, and I I, I kind of felt for him. I was heartbroken for him when he went and you know tracked down Allison, and her husband answered the door. Oh yeah. I was heartbroken for him. I was happy for Allison, but until that moment, it was well. I honestly like. How long was she there? She got there in 1960. She was there for. She was the first one there. Five years. Okay. Well, yeah, then she was the first one there. Then it's not as bad. But honestly, like I was like, Sh- the bitch moved on quick. And that's my first. Well, instinct. you well you don't know if your siblings were there or yeah. got and spread all across. You gotta take care of you until. And you once find they your explained that, I, I felt a little better about it. I was like, okay, I, I make this makes sense, and it need, especially not you guys say five years. I get it. You're not sure that. Well, she was there for five years. Um, Diego was there for four. Luther was there for three, and. Um. Well, no, no, Klaus sorry. There. Klaus was there for the three. longest. No, wait, was it? Klaus yeah, was there yeah, the longest. Klaus got there before Allison. And then Allison, and then Diego, and then Luther, and then Vanya. It was it was a crazy situation, and it'll find, having them find each other was really cool. Like now, I will say this: the story arc for Vanya was kind of interesting. In what two, season two? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she kind of went from villain to hero. By a car immediately. (laughs) Yeah, well, it's not just that. It's I didn't see the love interest coming at all. I did. Oh yeah, with 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 the wife. To an extent, I did. To an extent, like I was, I was like, yeah, they're gonna do this, and yeah, you you could see it pretty quick with her. Um, I liked it. I thought it was cool, especially Mm -hmm. when, especially when the husband. Was a raging violent alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and an I asshole. Didn't like that about him. But sadly, that was coming back in the sixties. What I didn't see was the whole like, until of course I saw it, you know, the kid getting hurt that she was protecting, and she brought him back. I I was like, you know, when you see the the, the graphics that they use for that, first thing I'm thinking is, did she just give him some of her power? Mm-hmm. You know, my question is, is what did um. What did that Duro bitch do to him before she went up and started harassing the Umbrella Academy? Because remember, she found the the young man down there, like, in his own little cocoon and talked to him for a few minutes. What did she do to him? True. I mean, even after, supposedly, Vanya got her power back from him at the end of the fucking season, when, when it's talking about, you know, the, in the epilogue or whatnot of that, of that episode... You see that little fucker floating around one of his toys as they're running around. So she, that motherfucker has some power still. So what I'm wondering is if somewhere in the whole story arc of all this, if he's not Vanya's dad, like biological dad. I, I was even wondering that too. Like possible like grandpa, biological dad. No. Yeah, but that would be kind of messed up though. 
I honestly, if you think about it, though, like it Paul, would be uh, sleeping with your great grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Not just doing the licky licky. They were, they were, uh, they were scissoring they were for the sure. Sticky sticky. <laughs> they were scissoring for sure. But nah, I mean, uh, you put it that way, I'm a little disgusted now. But that's okay. <laughs> um, but you know, there was, there were also scenes in in season two that showed like how different the world was, especially with uh, Allison. You know. Uh, yeah, with, with 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 the way things really were back then with ethnicity that, and all that stuff and I was that, like damn that a lot of people that didn't grow up around that um have no clue what it was like yeah mm -hmm. and, and I really this liked show that. really brings that to life I really liked how they kind of pushed that out there how they kind of went with yeah. it and it was it was well done and then of course let's get the Klaus let's talk about Klaus was season 2 where he went to fucking Nam. Mm, that, was no, season, that, was that was season one. Season one. Well, let's go back to that real quick. Like that, did, it, did that just throw everyone else for a loop, or was it just? Yeah, me? it did. Because it was oh, out of I nowhere. Mean, he, he's the ultimate hippie, and you send him to Nam, and he's like, uh. Um, yeah, and he fell in okay. love with a the guy there. But let's put himself like in his perspective. Like, he lost someone he loved, and that sucks. Like, and it's, it, you know, and that. From my understanding, that was a pretty common thing, especially in Vietnam. Uh, you know, because they would go in straight, but then there Didn't would always be that one person that would save their life and would always have their back. See, I never thought and of it that way. I never did. That's yeah. interesting. In, in the fact that, like, he held the guy as he died in his arms... Yeah, that's. It, I think that was a point of him becoming more mature. Yeah, I think that was yeah. his because he came back. And, he was changed, and people and, knew. And at the same time, that was also a breaking point for him. Yeah, mentally, yeah. more than he already was. I love the idea that Ben was with him the whole time. I absolutely love the idea that Ben was always there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it showed kind of a backstory of, of like Ben's trying to help him in some cases, like, hey, mm -hmm. get off the drugs and he's like, Fuck you, I'm gonna do what I want. And it it came down to what I feel in real life is how it is, is you gotta want to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to you have to do it yourself. Like you, you people can tell you a thousand times, that's just gonna make you not it doesn't care. You don't care. But once you're ready, once you're in that mindset, hey, no more, I'm done with hey, this. Hey, I'm ready to do this now. Exactly. Yeah. And I think they caught that beautifully. Um, now, Ben's second death, I about cried. Mm hmm. Uh, guy went out like a fucking hero that he was. Yes, definitely. Did it ever say how he passed the first time? Uh, it just showed us his funeral. No, but I would assume it had to be with his power. It was a training accident. Yeah, I know that much. But it doesn't say any specific. I would, like I said, I, for for God's sakes, he had the power of fucking Cthulhu in his chest. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first I'm, time I'm, it showed. I'm thinking powers. what what might have happened was uh, he just tore himself apart the first time he tried using his powers. Mm. No, because he used his powers in the bank robbery. The bank robbery. The he was fine. bank robbery. Honestly, I think he got shot or something. I think I think because because it was it wasn't just a training exercise because everything they did was a training exercise when they were kids even if they went out and did stuff mm -hmm. so I think that they went out in on on an actual mission that was a training exercise that went wrong and I think that Cthulhu boy got killed I think he got yeah. fucking shot or, or or cut up or something you know it ends and like you guys were saying um, Vanya more or less her 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 role changed it's it, it flip flopped in the season two. Mm -hmm. She was, she. I mean, she was still kind of the cause of the apocalypse, which is fucking amazing as far as the this timeline storyline goes. Yeah, both times. <laughs> yeah, but this time she helped prevent it instead of mm -hmm. causing being the one and be like, "Oh, hey, let's do this." Yes. So, I mean, I get and I get why she did what she did in season one. She was being pushed, and they were fucking up. 
the the, the and she, she she was hurt emotionally. Big time. Mm-hmm. She knew to the, trust. The, the, her her family, the people that she loved, turned on her. In season one, were were her boyfriend? I'll call him her boyfriend, that Jen- Jenkins guy or whatever. Uh, yeah. Peabody. When she got when he got those guys to beat him up, I was like, oh, I knew that was gonna happen. I'm like, yeah, this motherfucker is gonna do something, and force her into fucking using her powers. <coughs> And and then she just like more or less murdered two of them without even trying. Mm-hmm. And the other one was just all fucked up. Soap opera was superheroes. So from season two, what is your favorite moment of each character? Of of the siblings. I'll, I'll you would know, say, yeah, go 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 first, Ice Cold. I'm curious about. I, this. I would say Luther, or find out Luther was being employed by um, oh, what was his name? By the fucking mobster. Yeah, yeah, by the mobster. But it wasn't just a mobster; it was a big mobster. I can't remember. It who was the was. mobster. Yeah, at the at time. time. That um, was a good one because he was he was fighting for him. He was like his fucking bodyguard. He was yeah. in, He was his enforcer. Yes, Riz. So we'll we'll go from Luther on down. Okay. So my my favorite part with Luther was uh, when he's sitting there with the the conspir- conspiracy theorists, and they're just I don't I don't remember if they were getting drunk or they were getting high or <laughs> what, but they, they were the, they were doing the mask thing with the fucking laughing. The oh yeah, juice, yeah, the, yeah. the the gravity bong. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was just hilarious. When they, they were, were laughing about everything. Laughing about nothing. It was great. It took me back. That was <laughs> that took me back. back. <laughs> I uh, from Luther for me, I would say definitely um, the scene with five, the two fives, where he's uh, where he's he doesn't know what the fuck to do. You, like what the fuck? Well, the, when it's great in the because lot, just, yeah, doo, 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 it's great because he's a leader. Like number one was supposed to be a leader. And he just has no fucking clue what to do. He's just like, mm-hmm. you know, number five is more or less the guy who just thinks of everything. He's a smart fucker. He's intelligent. Diego. Diego. So ice cold mm-hmm. if you would. Diego, I, I would think him being in the insane asylum. Yeah. I got to agree 100%. That's probably yes. my favorite. Yes. That was hilarious. So, so I think we all agree on we all, that. We all agree on that. The insane asylum was fucking. Only, and on top of that, he kind of met that gal that was nuts. And the, oh the, yeah, you know, they the ended up being what's her name's daughter, and that was cool. But it wasn't you know it wasn't her daughter, but it was you, you get it. it. Ends up being a part she, of him. At she the did end. the same thing with her that the father did with all the siblings. Well, except for except for mm-hmm. Reginald didn't kill their parents. True. Okay, so w- number three, which is Allison. Allison. Uh, I would say watching Allison go through all the like uh, equal rights type of movements. That's a good. That's a very good one. From yeah. from you know learning about it in her history books as a kid to actually living through it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Mine would be when they're in the diner, and she finally says enough is enough, and. Is like, well, and she, I heard and she rumors them. That yes, you served me coffee. Yeah. Uh, my favorite is when when her and Klaus get drunk in her kitchen. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And they're just like fuck it. Let's hands in the air. So okay, number four. Klaus. Um, Klaus. I think my favorite part would be you know learning that he started Destiny's Children. I didn't put two and two together that he mm-hmm. did that. Was Destiny's Children a real thing? Yes. <coughs> yes I had no idea. <laughs> I had no fucking idea that that was a th- That's hilarious. Now that I know, that's a fucking... That's even more funny. Yeah. My my favorite part with him uh, is when he's just kind of lounging in the pool when Allison comes up and he's like, Wait, Allison? And like comes out and he's wearing like the Dalai Lama's diaper and jumps up and gives her a big hug. And yeah, 
That's, that's it, a really good one. It just fits his character so well. It does. Yeah. Klaus, Klaus, there's a lot to love about him. And at first, there's a lot to yeah. hate about him. And it, yeah. he, there was definitely like a retribution with that guy. And it was really cool. Um, My favorite would definitely be when he bails uh, Allison's husband out of jail. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, a good one, too. When it, because the look on his face, like, you're her brother? What? Yeah. <laughs> What's up with what's up with my wife it's having all these white brothers? <laughs> it's all, welcome to the family. <laughs> Fucking yeah. cats on the back. So number five now, which is of course number five. Number five. <laughs> um, I have two favorite moments. One when he kind of turns on uh, number two in the asylum. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, and when he fights against himself. When he fights against himself is mine. I, I, I gotta agree with that one. That's Mine is, in my opinion, the best sequence set in season two when he's just going ape shit on the board. Oh, yeah. Just killing. You're talking all about of the when board. he walks in there and just mur- murks all of them. Yeah, w- with, with, with the freaking fire, fire ha- uh, axe. Yes. I was like, oh. Like, you know, a 13-year-old boy just murdering all these guys. And that, not giving two shits. The fact that the head of the board was a fucking fish. Yeah. I th- I'm, I'm, th- probably one of my few bitches is that. And, like, that was kind of dumb. That was lame. Oh, number six. Ben, uh, right? It's Ben. Ben. I think nagging on Klaus would go back to Destiny's Children. Yeah. Riz? Mine is when he took over Klaus's body <laughs> so that he can try and get laid. I gotta agree with that one. That's the, that is fucking hilarious. And the fact that like and then, him and, and number two finding out that, that Klaus had already been banging her. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was fucking hilarious. Well I like the I like the reunion between him and two. Like when they like he's like I thought you weren't with yes. us. Yeah, well, apparently Klaus says a bunch of bullshit. And they like, it was just kind of well, good. It was good acting. Aren't you Klaus? <laughs> no, I'm Ben. <laughs> oh, I'm Ben. I'm, Wait, I, found a way to, I found a way to possess him. And Number seven. Um, I think would be find out she had that love interest and when they shared the bed. Oh, that, that the whole scene where they're trying to figure out what they're going to do next. That's kind of mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. My favorite scene with Vanya is when she empties out that entire pond to find the boy. Great CG, by the way. Amazing. Very well done. Yeah. <coughs> um, mine would definitely be the fact that she's kind of she lost her memory. I like I like the fact that she lost her memory and she's more or less like these people are coming like I'm your brother, and they're like and she's like okay. <laughs> so that and? maybe that yeah that's about what I like about uh, season two. I don't know if it's a particular part, but the the actress they got for Vanya, god damn it, you yes. guys did mm-hmm. very amazing. Very like good. all the actors and actresses, the kids, the adults, everyone, you guys did fucking great. Netflix, stay away from cuties. Stop doing shit like that. Stick with fucking stick with fucking shit like this. I will say I kind of did get rid of Netflix because of that. A lot of people have, and that's why what I do said. You think? That. Uh, back to the topic. Amazing show. Watch that shit. Tell us what Definitely. you think. Because we told you all of our favorite parts. I mean, season one, there's a lot of good shit in that. Season two, it just gets better. See, I, I didn't know how they were going to top season one. Because I thought mm-hmm. the end of season one was amazing. Yeah. And then they turn around and... They do. Like here. Blow this. season one out of the water with season two. And, you know, after they did season one, it was all over the place that it was a one and done. So then whenever I saw season two was coming out, I was like, <gasps> yep, I need to and finish watching whatever I'm watching now because that's all I'm watching until I'm done with it. And while I'm not 100% sure on this, I believe the entire show is based off the comics so far. Okay, so it's it's pretty close to what it is, or is 100%? Uh, I, I, I believe so. I'm not 100%. I'll have okay. to do some more research on that. Either way, it, it's really cool. What are you guys' thoughts on the triplets? 
It was from from season two. You talk, you're they were to... totally insane. I I liked them, but I also liked to hate them. Like yeah, they were interesting as far as like you know they were warriors, and they you mm-hmm. know when the first one died they gave him like a Viking funeral more or less. And well, I, they were they were a hundred percent regular humans too. Yeah, I also liked that they did that. Um, Hello from the other side song. And that uh, let me get into that. The music in this fucking series. I wanted to talk about oh, this. Oh, so good. The music in this series is fucking great. And that's what I was getting into. The fucking, the, the, that song. And I'm not a big fan of the hello from the other side song. <laughs> but they did it in Swedish, which is what they are. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was great. Like, I was into that. So. It's attention to detail. Yes. And it's just how they did it. And, and the music, like the fight music was... They would play like ballroom blitz, and there was other songs that they played that just didn't match the fucking fight, but it fit. It did. It fit so well. Like it I was so, well. so into it, and I, I was just like, I know this song. I know this. Why are they using this song for a fight? Oh my god, it works. Mm-hmm. <coughs> because it it more or less, I think it more or less uh, determines what the characters like. That's their attitude. Hmm. You know, that, that's another thing, the whole Destiny's Child cult or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. I love that Klaus kept using fucking lyrics from music. Yeah. As, like, <laughs> words of wisdom. It's so great. Don't go chasing waterfalls. I about shat my pants laughing. <laughs> I thought that was funny, dude. <laughs> I was like, come on, dude. That, Stick to the rivers. And the lakes. Jeez. Like you're used to. <laughs> like, I, God damn it. Just such a good show. Such a good show. Let's rate it. Wait, what? Seasons one and two. Let's rate it. We'll start with you, Grizz. One to ten. As a whole, the show I would give it a nine because it is that freaking good. That freaking good. And I cannot wait for season three. Ice cold. I would agree with Grizz. I'm going to top both of y'all and give it a 10. And I don't give 10s often. No, you don't. This was... You haven't given a 10 at all since no, I've this, been around. Well, it also blew my mind. Like, I was... Ex- yeah. My, my expectations were down here. It went way up there. Like, I, I was expecting stupidity, and I got fucking genius. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, fuck yes, dude. 10. It gets a 10 from me. So, yeah. is there anything else we need to talk about before we end the podcast? Um, let's see. I got nothing. When this comes out, within the next week of this coming out, we are going to be doing a live stream podcast that probably won't be one of the normal podcasts. It's going to be a... It might even be numbered. It might just be like kind of like an off podcast that we're... Yeah. An off podcast podcast for a little bit of a celebration, as it were. Even though we kind of did that last weekend. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, we did. <laughs> um, but yeah. So look forward to that. We will be uh, going Perfect. live on Facebook. Probably uh, Facebook and everything else. I'll try, I'll try and because now we got a way to go to all sorts of different. You know, mediums. Nice. So, mm-hmm. I just got to um, test it. And it will be a bit different than our normal podcast because uh, there will be a few of us on the same couch. Kind of like last mm-hmm. week. Kind of like last week. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, uh, I have to me on that couch, and my this live stream might be somewhere else. <laughs> What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mind just went straight into gutter wild. Well, that's why I like it. Ice cold. Uh, we <laughs> usually do things on the couch at wild. <laughs> the couch has got so many cum stains. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> and you wonder why I sit on the floor. Because <laughs> no, you're floor stuck works. there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we'll probably do something like that. It'll be kind of like a... A celebration kind of podcast. It's going to be yeah. for a birthday that we didn't get. To, so we celebrated, but we didn't get to celebrate officially on the show. 
Yeah. So, uh, but there's also some other stuff that Ice Cold's doing that has started this, well, recently. This is a, yeah. And uh, I'm also trying, we're, we're also talking about getting him to do some live streaming for us. Aren't we, Ice Cold? Yep. So, uh, you know, look Just forward to that. Look out for that. <laughs> yeah, look forward to that. We got, we got other things coming. We're still going to try and get some stuff done uh, for, uh, for, October, we're going to do some gameplay of Dead by Daylight. I, just, I got that in this, the thing, and hopefully uh, this guy over here, Grizzly, gets his, his internet all fixed up and he can join us, because it'll be a blast. We're hoping. Well, I'm fierce yeah. cross, but you know, that way you can join us, but I've got... Guys, you don't understand, like, I, I, Ice Cold, do you have Dead by Daylight on your PC? Because it is no, not No, I not. Okay. I've got 300 people literally asking me to play these games. Yeah. Like it's I, I as far as people like I have no problem getting content right now, but that's beside the point. Anyway, because there's certain people I want to play. Mm-hmm. These two, but uh, we'll, you know that we'll we'll find other games to play if need be, and, and this guy will get his internet when he does, and it'll it'll yeah. be a blast. But uh, we got Ice Cold doing his thing. He's getting ready to uh, getting ready to do some streaming for us. You know. Uh, we're going to set that up, and it's going to be on probably multiple platforms like we were talking about um, if I get things set up the way I want to. And, I mean, honestly, like, t today I posted something, well, day of recording this, I posted something on Facebook. Uh, you know, we had 215? 215 views. Views today, and just today. And you know what, man, guys, like, we That's love you. That's awesome. We love you. Like I never thought, I mean, even if it's five, ten, fifty, like we said on the uh, on the, on the Facebook. Facebook page, like yeah, we're honored to have anyone watching us. We're honored to have mm -hmm. people that that are into what we do. And you know, if we are, if we bring a smile out, then it just makes it our day that much better. Exactly. So uh, I think that's. I think we've covered just about everything. This is episode one thirty five. Again, we got five more episodes at the end of the season, guys. Mm -hmm. And then, like usual, take our little hiatus, our break. Doesn't mean we're not going to be putting out content. We're always putting out content. Always. And, uh, always. always. And, uh, <laughs> always. I love your mouth, Grizz. <laughs> oh, goddamn. Okay, save it, save it for the couch. So, with that said and done, guys, I guess we'll go ahead and end this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Want you to stay nerdy? Stay sexy. Always. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's why I don't take you anywhere.